Hey, it's Miss Renee. I just wanted to come to you to say hi. I've never came on here to the Healthy and Wealthy channel and actually introduced myself to you. So I just wanted to come on and say hello and um, tell you a little bit about me and tell you why I started this platform, why I started this channel. Um, I wrote some things down. So I'm going to be reading. So if I look down like this, that means that I'm reading my copy because I want to stay on point. Um, I don't want to ramble a lot. I want to stay on point so that I can tell you everything that I would like to tell you about health, the Healthy and Wealthy channel. I'm not too good with being on camera, so I just ask that you bear with me. Um... I'm just starting a YouTube channel, and so I don't know a lot of ins and out about everything, about the camera and focusing and all of that kind of stuff. I'm definitely not used to speaking on camera, so please bear with me as I try to get through this. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you the reason why I have not, you've not really seen me on this channel is because to break it down to you, um, basically, in a nutshell, is for fear. Um, I haven't been consistent on this channel for years, even though this channel has been something that I've dreamed about. It's something that I, um, I love. Health and wealth has been like top priority in my life, <laughs> believe it or not, for at least 10 years now. Um, and um, I love it. I believe that God has given me this as my ministry. And I plan to um, teach about health and wealth for the remainder of of my career, actually, among other things. I am a hairstylist. I've been a hairstylist for 20 years. So um, I just believe that God has got me on another mission to do something else with my life. And a long time ago, I started to fall in love with the health and wealth subject and topic because in the African American community and probably in a lot of other communities too, I just am not aware of it because I don't live in that culture. Um, health and wealth are the two biggest, I don't wanna say downfalls, but things that um, we are not as African Americans taught um, a lot about health no uh the way we eat no uh drinking smoking no um um wealth no it was not taught in our schools our parents didn't know that much about it so once i got my hands on this information it just took root on the inside of me and the seed started to grow so, like I said, um, it took me a while to come on here and speak to you the way I'm speaking to you now, basically out of fear um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is uh, I have pretty much failed at everything that I've tried to do. I have failed probably in every area of my life. So who am I to come on here and speak to somebody about being healthy and being wealthy when I constantly fail at almost everything that I do? <laughs> so that kept me from coming on here. Um, who am I? Like nobody knows me, like, <laughs> you know? Nobody knows who I am. I'm not like a big, you know, to do and all of this kind of stuff. So who who's going to listen to me? Like, why would anybody listen to me? Um, 
I'm just the average person with a dream and a hope in my mind and in my heart. And uh, I'm here to teach you what I do know. I am not perfect and uh, I'm learning and I'm growing still, but I'm still, I just want to give the information that I've learned and hopefully it'll bless somebody and we can be blessed together because we're going to grow together on this channel. Um, and last but not least, like I said, I'm barely making it as a hairstylist and I'm 150 pounds overweight. So who's going to listen to a person who's barely making it as a hairstylist and 150 pounds overweight start a channel about health and wealth. So I'm sitting before you today. You ask why? <laughs> because I'm pretty much fed up. I'm fed up with fear. I'm fed up with anxiety. I'm fed up with poverty and low self-esteem. I been fed up, but fear kept me from stepping up to this platform sooner. Low self-esteem made me feel like I didn't physically look good enough. Poverty made me feel like I'm not dressed well enough. And anxiety made procrastination seem like the right thing to do. The reason I created this platform is because I can't take it anymore. I need to take control over my life. I'm 46 years old. I don't own a home. I have no money saved for retirement. I'm 150 pounds overweight. I've been a hairstylist for 20 years and I still make the same amount of money a year that I was making 10 years ago. Although I'm very grateful for my life, I know the quality of my life could be better. So I decided that's it. I'm changing and the time is right now. The other reason I created this platform is because I know I'm not alone. I see people every day paralyzed with fear and anxiety, poverty stricken, addicted to sex, alcohol, drugs, anger, abuse, people not coping well with life, getting over or they can't get over tragedies of the past. People are morbidly obese and sick. They are depressed and have no clue what their purpose is and what direction they should be going in. If you are this person, stay with this channel we're going to get healthy and wealthy together. If you're watching and you know someone who can use an accountability, accountability partner, refer them to this channel. It literally took me about 10 to 15 years to get the point, to get to the point that I am today. I had to go through a healing process that I thought would never ever end. I was born poor. My mom and me, when my mom had me when she was 16, my dad moved away when I was young. I watched my mom be physically and verbally abused. That same boyfriend molested me at 11 years old. I was an only child, so I had no one to talk to. My self-esteem was low. I felt rejected and abandoned and didn't understand why. I started having sex at 16, got pregnant at 18, started drinking, smoking, and living a selfish, rebellious life, letting my son stay with my mom most of the time to protect him from the reckless life I was living. I alienated myself from most of my family because I was ashamed. I lived with no heat, no water, Mice running around the house, roaches. 
I had let my life spiral out of control. Then I turned around at 26 and married a 21 year old I had only been dating for 11 months. Now my life was out of control and completely miserable. I seriously considered killing myself at some point. My mom was ashamed of me. My dad was an alcoholic living away from me. My husband didn't love me and my son had no respect for me. I started praying and going to church once in a while. I knew that if things continued on as they were, I would be in jail or dead soon. I began a spiritual journey to heal and get answers from God and the universe about why I'm here. Why am I supposed, what am I supposed to be doing? Why am I suffering like this? Why are some people rich and some people poor? How did I end up on the poor side? Is there anything I can do to move to the rich side? I wonder why people were so mean and hateful. Why do people do drugs to the point of killing themselves? Why do people drink and fall out and pass out? Why do people argue and fight so much? Why don't people care what happens to them? Why do people act like they okay, but they clearly are not? Why? It's like, we all are committing suicide slowly. Why don't we realize that? Or do we realize it and just don't care? And if that's the case, why don't we care? Anyway, I continued on drinking, partying, and living a rebellious life because at this point, my lifestyle had become a habit. My brain was programmed to react the way it had always, it always did because I didn't have any new information. I had conformed to my hostile environment, but something deep down in my spirit in the core of my being would not let me accept this lifestyle as my reality. I knew I wasn't supposed to be living like that and I couldn't get used to it, but I could not change either. I tried, I prayed about it, I cried about it. I was ashamed of my lifestyle and for some reason I got up every single day and did the same thing I did yesterday. It was like I just could not stop it and I didn't and it made me, it, it depressed me that I wanted to stop. I wanted to live a different way and I just could not stop. I didn't know what it was, but I was determined to find out how to stop it. I lived a life that I did not want to be living for over 20 years. I suffered a lot and I lost everything as a result of it. I felt like an imposter, just going with the flow. I wanted to be myself. The only problem was I didn't know who that was. I started praying for God to save me, but because I wasn't living right, I wasn't really sure he would. My soul was searching for a way out of this mess that I made. And then one day it happened. <laughs> I'm going to try not to cry through this because I want to get through this. God led me to a book that not, only, that not only changed the course of my entire life, it had all the answers to every question I had to the exact step-by-step -step instructions to follow so that I could gain control of my life, achieve anything that I wanted. 
I was so happy. I could not put this book down. I read it over and over. I studied it. I took notes on it and no, it was not the Bible. <laughs> not that the Bible is not a good book to read because I do read it and I do study the Bible more now than I ever have in my entire life. But at this moment of my life, it wasn't the Bible that attracted my attention. It was somebody who had read the Bible and wrote another book that reeled me in to the Bible principles. And then once I learned these principles, I realized that they were Bible or scriptural. And that's why I now read and study the Bible at this point in my life, but this particular book was not the Bible. It was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill was an ordinary man, no money, no education, that was charged by a wealthy businessman to devote his life to finding out why some people are poor and why some people are rich. He interviewed 25,000 poor people and 500 rich people. He compared both lifestyles, both daily habits, both daily routines, both sets of personalities, both character traits, and he boiled it all down to one thing. <sighs> How you choose to think and what you choose to believe. Well, it took me a while to grasp that concept because I didn't know how to change what I believed. Um, I, I couldn't understand that. You know, it took me a long time. Like I said, I had to read, I had to study. I had to grasp these concepts because that's not what I grew up with. You know, that's not what I was told. And I had to realize that a lot of things that I was told was told by other people who lived in fear, who other people who lived their life without faith. And I don't want to down anybody in my family or anybody who raised me in my community because they did the best they could. They, they gave me the information that they were given as children. And that's why they were, they, they, that's why they gave it to me. But what I had to do was I had to learn how to think for myself. I had to, I had to learn how to let the situation that I was in and the circumstances that I was in, you know, um, put all the variables, variables together and, and figure out my own math problem. Some of the stuff that I still did use because it was wisdom, but a lot of stuff was just fear that uh, I was taught and I had to unlearn a lot of things, which took a lot of time. You have no idea how hard it is to unlearn something that has been put in your DNA since you were a child. Um, how to think differently, how to approach life at, at, a, at a different angle how to think positively all the time, even when things are negative, how to, um, how to, uh, read information and how to stay focused and stay on track and not let my emotions get the best of me. Because in my neighborhood where I grew up, Whatever you thought about came out. If you felt like beating somebody up, you beat them up. If you felt like cussing somebody out, you cuss them out. I come from a long line of strong black women. My grandmother in particular did not play no games. So it's like I grew up 
learning how to react and not how to so much think. So this book taught me how to use my brain, how to use my mind to get what I want. I just want to tell you a little story that stuck with me for a long time. And this is an example of how your parents or people teach you things and um, you do them unknowingly. So it was a, it was a little, it was a lady and she cooked a ham and she cooked the ham in, in a little roaster pot and she would cut the, the, the end off her ham. And so her daughter asked her, you know, mom, why do you cut the, the end off your ham like that before you put it in the roasting pot? And she said, I don't know. I mean, that's the way, that's the way my mother taught me to do it. So one day, um, they were sitting at the grandmother's house and the grandmother asked her, the mother asked the grandmother, mom, like, why do you always cut the end off of the ham like that? And she told her, because the pot that I was using was too small. And every time I bought a ham, I had to cut the end off of it in order for the ham to fit in the pot. So the daughter was like, well, so I've been cutting the, ha the end of the ham off, the, the end of the ham off all of these years, not knowing that the reason why you did it was because your pan was too short. And the mother just shook her head and, you know, was like, okay. But it was, that's funny because the daughter was cutting the end off of her ham all these years thinking that it has something to do with the way you cook the ham. And she was really about to teach the same thing. If her daughter hadn't stopped and asked why, and that's what I'm saying about how you have to think about things before you do them. Don't just do things because other people are doing them because you don't know why they did it. Even your mom, even your grandmother and things like that. You have to think for yourself or you could go your whole life doing something that was insignificant and irrelevant. So that is my point that I'm trying to make to you. Um, the second thing, well, another thing that I wanted to say is that your perception becomes your truth. Whatever uh, you believe is true, it is. If you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. Either way, you're right. You will never have anything you don't believe. You will never have anything you don't believe you can have. And you will never do anything you don't believe you can do. This was a seed that took years to take root in my DNA and start to grow, mainly because the weeds of self-doubt, low self-esteem, and bad habits had grew as big as oak trees. It took a while to chop it down. Um, the, 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 the leaves were strong. The roots, I mean, the, 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 the vines were strong. And it had took root in every area of my life. With much prayer, reading, research, going to church, soul searching, crying, failing, forgiving myself and others, realizing and accepting my thoughts, I finally believed I could change. I believe I could change. I believe I can be everything that God created me to be. I believe I can be healthy. I believe I can be healed. I believe I can be whole. I believe I can be set free and delivered. I believe that I can live free from sin. I believe that I can have unlimited wealth and can afford anything I want to, to uh, advance the kingdom of God stay with this channel 
because in my next video, we will discuss the first principle of, of achievement. Go get the book, Think and Grow Rich. They have a free um, re recording of it on YouTube. You can go buy the book. You can get the digital download for like $2 on your Kindle, but get the book because we're going to be discussing all the principles in there. We're going to be uh, discussing the 17 principles of achievement. We're going to be discussing so many things um, this year that I am so excited for. Not only am I excited for you, I'm excited for me because I know as I research and teach you, I'm learning and changing. And not only that, I am going to document how I change. I am going to document. I'm in. The, I'm in. I'm, I'm about to lose a hundred pounds. I'm so. Uh, I'm so obsessed with uh, losing this weight, and I'm obsessed with helping you, and I. And I'm obsessed with helping me. So that is the reason why I started this platform right now, and didn't wait until I lost a hundred pounds, and didn't wait until I became wealthy. Because you know what? Sometimes people need to see what happens at the beginning until the end. You know how most people want to wait and show off all their pictures when they lost the weight. Oh, I lost 150 pounds. Now let me tell you how I did it. Or, you know, started from the bottom. Now you hear video and you want to show and flash all your money and your cars and all this kind of stuff. Nope. This is what I want to do. I want to start with nothing. I want to start at ground zero here with you, work my way up and document it with you and grow with you at the same time. So now, you know, knowing somebody did something is one thing, but seeing somebody do something is another. And you ask yourself, Renee, well, how you know you're not going to fail this time? I might, maybe I will. And you're going to be here to watch it. You're going to be here to watch it every step of the way. And guess what else you're going to see? You're going to watch me get up. You're going to watch me try again. And you say, Renee, how do you know you're going to do that? Y'all have no idea who I am and where I'm from. I picked myself up several times out of different situations. And I'm still here which means it is something on the inside of me that will not let me quit. It's something on the inside of me that will not let you quit. You stay tuned to this channel. We are going to grow together. I'm going to document all of my failures, all of my rewards. I have a lot of things to do. I got a lot of businesses that I'm starting this year. I am going to include you in everything I do. I'm going to show you my checks. I'm going to show you my bank account. I'm going to show you how God works. God is about to work right before your very eyes. Stay tuned to this channel because God is working in this channel. He's working on me. He's working on you. And remember... God don't need you to be perfect. He just needs your participation. If you're willing to just participate, whether you fail or not, then let's do this together. I want you to comment below. I want you to subscribe to my channel, um, Health and Wealth on YouTube. Um, I love you, and I'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye.